Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy Mini Bite. This was a kind donation by CRG Glenn. He's got an excellent channel, I'll pop a link up in the corner and obviously in the description as well. Go check him out. He's done some very interesting things recently with the PC engine you just wouldn't believe. However, this is a Commodore joystick which did feature on one of my videos and the problem was it needed a lot of force to get it to move. It doesn't feel like it's micro switched and based on the age I'm going to go it's leaf switch and they're going to need a good clean. So let's have a look at this, get this all cleaned up and working as it should. Now I can see one screw here but there's no screws anywhere else however the rubber pads have deteriorated and I've got a sneaking suspicion we'll find the other screws underneath the rubber pads I don't think I can salvage these yeah that's that's just crumbling the rubber has deteriorated to the point that it's uh, it's, yeah, it's flaking off into pieces so sometimes your repairs will be a little bit destructive but there's nothing we can do about that so with the four screw points revealed let's get this apart Now it is also clipped at the side, you can see the clips here, but we do have a wire or two wires running up. So before we go any further, let's get this off. So here we are, the first look at the insides. We've got a number of plastics that are going to need a bit of of clean, if for no other reason than to get the finger juice off them. Mmm, tasty, tasty. We have a spring which sits and holds this against the top case, and that gives us a little bit of the spring plus centering. We have a rubberized block which sits underneath, just sits down here and the stick sits on it so that again that stops it from being able to be pushed down too far but gives it a pivot and interestingly we're not using what I suspected or leaf springs but we're using some contacts so I'm going to guess that over time these have come a little bit tarnished and they will need a bit of a clean now the whole thing is grubby but everything's soldered on to the circuit board so for me to be able to clean this bottom board properly I will need to desolder we've got some more contact points up here which yeah high tech they've used some uh, very old and crusty sellotape now to hold everything in place so this is all uh, yeah I mean oh one bit of stick and the rest of it just falls off. There are some holes for location so that everything will sit in the right place but let's get this apart fully so we can clean everything before we tackle the circuit board. So with that all desoldered we can pop the plastics to the side. We're going to make sure we pop these temporarily to the side because I'm going to have a look at this first and hmm, I've got a shield on it 
interesting. Let's just remove this crusty tape and have a look and see what's going on. So with that all done and the crusty tape off, that can go away. And to start with, this shield is still fine. We can remove it. And that can go to the side at the moment. The board itself is fine. I'm going to clean up all of this. Clean up all the contact points, including of course on the fire buttons. And then the rubber and the plastics will go away for a bit of a clean. So this is a little tip for you if you happen to have bought the cheap Chinese solar braid that hasn't been fluxed. It can be quite awkward to actually get it to work. So, I mean, the amount that's on this it will, but you can see how slowly it's soaking through. Little tip, I'm using some top neck and it's a soldering SMD flux, no clean, and it's a liquid. Dip your wick in, and now it'll soak up nicely straight onto the braid. With very little wit in the way of cleaning needing done, except for the flux that's on from the original solder. looks a lot better and you can see just from the amount I'm taking off just how much solder was on that lot now the hard one to do is going to be the shield but we'll do our best and there we have it all done good little tip this stuff is really good if you've got the cheap Braid. So next is going to be cleaning up the casings. That will be done as normal. Hot soapy water using some Vanish Oxy Action. Anything that Oxy Clean or similar, if you're not in the UK, should work the same. And we're going to make this a little bit more pleasant to look at. So back in a minute. So the last thing to clean is going to be these contacts. Now we have to be careful, they are very old and we do not want to rub on these for any longer than is necessary and we want to do it gently. And you'll see a little bit comes off. We are just trying to lift a little bit of the surface, the loose stuff, so that hopefully it will make a better electrical connection and it's pushed down. So with those all done, we can start slowly putting everything back together. Now with those in place, I'm going to do this as the manufacturer intended, and I'm going to use some sellotape. So to test this is relatively straightforward if a little bit awkward. Each of these buttons, like this one, has a contact that goes to two points. So the theory is, if I test across these in diode mode, hopefully when the button is pressed I'll get a beep. Okay, we didn't get a beep, but you could see that each time it was held down, I was getting a reading. So let's reassemble. And 
and it's this point of the reassembly that you realise you've missed something. Can you tell what it is? Hmm. Got to get this wire through that tiny little hole in there. <laughs> okay. And there we have it. All done, all clean. Moving in all directions. Button feeling fine. And much cleaner. There is a little bit of white mark here. That may come off with a little bit of isopropyl. It certainly didn't come off in hot soapy water. What did come off was what was left of the, the sort of uh, chrome paint that they'd applied. So I'll see if I can get a chrome paint pen or something. And we can see if we can improve on that. However, to be honest, it's looking not bad at all. Now, the rubber feet they are dead. I could stick them back on, but they are, yeah, I mean, it's just breaking apart. They're not really rubber anymore. And given a little bit longer, I think this will turn into a rubber mush. So it's probably best just ditching these. I'll see if I can pick up some something that'll do, because it just needs to cover and give a little bit of grip but a massive improvement on what it was. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next Retro Crazy Mini Bite.